All right, so remember that time you were taking the AP Psych exam and you were like, <laughs> But then you got to the FRQ and it was like, Reading rates are declining at the school or whatever, and this one guy had the bright idea to give people pizza coupons as incentives if they met the reading requirements, something or other, blah blah blah. Explain how the overjustification effect might affect this random wise guy's conclusions. <laughs> and you were like, <laughs> and the college board was like, <laughs> and it was just all sorts of bad, because you're left wondering, well, <laughs> What the heck is this overjustification effect? Really, it's not in any of our books, not in any of our prep guides. And so, now I present to you the overjustification effect in context of the FRQ on the AP exam. Oh boy, I sure do love reading. <laughs> well, I sure hope you like pizza, cause for every 10 books you read, Get one of these here coupons for some pizza! Well, I sure do like pizza! <laughs> and you mean to tell me I could be getting reinforced for something I already like to do, like reading? Oh, well, that just sounds peachy! Two weeks later! Wow! This pizza sure is good and not actually just a piece of cardboard. <laughs> but. You know, ever since I've been getting pizza coupons to reinforce my reading, I just don't like reading as much. I think I'll just stick to the not totally cardboard pizza. So now maybe you're thinking, well that wasn't helpful at all, Jake. I still don't understand what the overjustification effect is. And if that's true, let me offer you a more straightforward definition. So, the overjustification effect, also known as the undermining effect, happens when people are already intrinsically motivated to do certain behaviors. That is, they are motivated to do behaviors for the sake of doing them or for the sake of their own enjoyment. And then they are presented with extrinsic motivation, that is, motivation that provides them with either reinforcement or punishment to affect what behaviors they do. And in the presence of this extrinsic motivation, they begin to lose their intrinsic motivation to do these behaviors. That is, they start to enjoy doing the things they already like to do less because they're doing them for ulterior motives. So let's put that in context in what we looked at earlier from the AP exam. Now our friend Nerdy Nigel was already intrinsically motivated to read. <laughs> and then our friend Pizza Pete provided him with the extrinsic motivation of pizza coupons. <laughs> and consequently, in the presence of the extrinsic motivation of pizza coupons, Nerdy Nigel felt less intrinsically motivated to keep reading and started to enjoy reading less. Well, how do we know that's true, Jake? Prove it! First of all, you guys need to calm down. Second of all, I will prove it. And I'll prove it through experiments, theories, and applications of the overjustification effect. Alright, so let's take a trip back to the ancient times of 1973 where Mark Lepper and Richard Nisbet conducted one of the very first experiments on the overjustification effect and kind of the defining experiment on the overjustification effect. Okay, so basically here's the premise of the experiment. There are all these little kids and they love to draw. And these two psychologists were like, okay, like let's put these kids into three different groups. Now the first group was told Hey, if you keep drawing, you will get one of these wonderful Good Player Awards. The second group was not told that they would get one of these wonderful Good Player Awards that everyone wants. Um, however, if they met the, reading, er, the, the drawing requirements, they would still receive the awards. And then the third group was not offered or given anything. And what the experimenters found was that in the first group, when the people, when the little kids were 
expecting this reward, they had less intrinsic motivation to draw in the first place. I apologize for my video becoming increasingly less entertaining as we continue on, but as you can see, it's dark and it is getting very late, so I'm just trying to truck through this entire project right now. Anyway, so back to recent findings on the overjustification effect. In 2010, um, four scientists who I listed at the bottom of the screen here uh, conducted this experiment where they showed that exposure to money has been shown to diminish the level of enjoyment that people get from specific pleasures. And how they did that was they had a test body of participants and they asked them to imagine certain pleasurable activities such as uh, observing a waterfall for instance. And um, they were then asked to estimate the likelihood that they would um, engage in various behaviors that would uh, couple with like positive emotions. And the participants of the study who were wealthier tended to have a lesser likelihood to be engaged in these positive behaviors. Also, in 2012, Two other ex uh, scientists also listed at the bottom here. I believe their names were like Fishbach and Choi. Anyway, in 2012, they did an experiment where people were told to um, explain the benefits of running on a treadmill prior to running on a treadmill. And they would talk about like, oh, losing weight, oh, being healthier in general. Anyway, those who were asked to confront the benefits of running on a treadmill prior to running on the treadmill were actually less motivated to continue running on the treadmill um, as the time progressed than those who did not consider the benefits prior to running on the treadmill, if that makes any sense. Anyway, now let's continue on to theories. Ah, this is turning out so much longer than I planned it to be. Anyway, okay, so self-perception theory is when a person infers causes about his or own behavior based on external constraints. So basically, the presence of an, a constraint, such as a reward, would lead a person to conclude that they are doing behaviors solely for the reward. And then we get to cognitive evaluation theory, which basically says that tangible rewards i.e. money or pizza coupons, are perceived as controlling and they remove the feeling of self-determination and decrease intrinsic motivation. <coughs> I'm just trying to get this part checked out, it's late! The overjustification effect has a lot of applications in a lot of different areas, including education, gamification, volunteering, etc. For example, in education, um, educators should rely on the intrinsic motivation of students uh, when they can so that they're not reinforcing behaviors that students already like to do because they might like to do them less. However, that being said, there are certain behaviors that seem unpleasant to most, if not all, students. and. In that case, like, sometimes extrinsic motivators are necessary. And with that, I have explained the experiments and research, the theories, and the applications of the overjustification effect really broadly and really quickly. Um, they're a little more detailed on my research. This is Van Wyck. You can look at that a little bit. But anyway, I hope that this video has been helpful and like making a little more sense of the overjustification effect for future reference. I'm going to stop talking now because this video is already almost 10 minutes long and I need to go to bed. So thanks for watching.